I'm Shachar Azani, and in the news, Israeli Odelia Fitusi becomes the first ever Israeli to be elected to the UN panel for persons with disabilities. Following a year of campaigning, Odelia Fitusi was elected last week to represent Israel at the United Nations Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the CRPD. The CRPD is the leading UN body responsible for formulating a global policy for the 182 signatory states to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Israel was one of the leading nations to take part in drafting the convention, joining it in 2012. In the elections, representatives from 27 countries competed for nine slots on the committee, but Israel won in the first round, receiving support from 109 countries. Isn't that great news when it's coming out of the UN? To discuss this important and unprecedented development, I am thrilled to have with us on JBS, all the way from Batyam, Israel, Miss Odelia Fitusi. Fitusi is 43. She lives with muscular dystrophy. Odelia works as an artist, educator, and therapist with children and chose to dedicate her life to fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. She has pushed for greater inclusion of teachers with disabilities in the education system through the Merhavim Institute, where she leads this endeavor. She's also the chairperson of the organization's forum working to implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the CRPD, in Israel. Odelia, it is wonderful to have with us you, you with us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a great Thank pleasure, you. and I'd like to first ask you this very important of questions. How are you? How are you today? Thanks, God. I'm okay. Uh, now in Israel, it's uh, afternoon, uh, in the middle of the day for us, and uh, I succeeded already to work today, to visit my doctor, to have a therapy, and to talk with thousands of people, uh, people that are interesting about the, the election result, people that want kind of advice uh, for the life, for the community, what to do, what to change in their own community for people with disabilities. So I, I'm very happy that it's easy to, to get to me and to contact with me and try to do my best for that. Well, you know, your, your election, has been truly um, a momentous um, occasion. And for us as Israelis, news coming out of the UN that we have one of our own in Israeli to be part of such a respectable forum. But first of all, on the personal level, I have to ask you, share with us a little bit of your life story. What made you become the person, the activist that you are today? So with the story, I was born in 77. 1977, after two boys, Nathan L and Priel, my parents came, made Aliyah from uh, Tunis. Uh, my mom arrived to Israel when she was 12, and my father arrived to Israel when he was 30. He came to the synagogue to pray for Sukkot, and he couldn't uh, take off his, his eyes from my mom, and then they decided to marry after four, four days that they knew each other. And I was born, uh, and in the beginning, I was born really regularly, and when I was five months old, uh, my mom noticed that I stopped to turn in the bed. And all the time I had a pneumonia, uh, I was hospitalized time after time after time, and quite quickly they diagnosed me with SMA type 2. I always like to say the full name of uh, my disability because I know that if you give life, for other children, for other parents, because this disability, specific disability, it's in the no-no list. You know, if you discover it uh, by the blood or by the gene, the, the, the recommendation of the doctor is maybe it's not good, maybe you will not continue with that pregnancy. And for me, uh, it's really important to show that it's really a good life. I'm happy with my life. And that it's is, not. it's called SMA2? Yes, SMA type 2. Um, and what it means, it means that my muscles, uh, the nerve doesn't uh, function so well, and then it affects my nerves. And it means practically that I need to, to help 24 hours. It means from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I close my eyes, in almost most of the things that you do in the daily 
time, uh, waking up from the bed, uh, helping me to eat, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but still, I'm, I see myself as a very independent person for so many reasons. One of the reasons, the best reason is my parents. My parents uh, really believe uh, in two things. First of all, my parents believe in knowledge. They believe that knowledge is kind of strength that is, has to be a part of my life. And when you speak about it, it means that when I was a child, they always involved me in the discussion about my situation. Already when I was seven years old, I knew all my rights from, you know, uh, the National Service, Bituach Lumi, all what I need to receive. Nobody can trick me. I, I, when the doctor wanted to speak, to speak with them outside of the room, they told him, no, 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 go inside, talk with the girl, talk with us. She needs to take responsibility about her own life. And, she need the, and we need to share that information because we know that when she will know the information, she can hold the, the wheel, we said she can hold the wheel in the hand and, and drive her uh, for the future. And, and the second thing is about choice. I think choice is something also in the Jewish uh, perception and also in, in the reality, choice is something very important in life. The fact that you see in every situation an uh, option for choice. You can always choose what you want. You can always have possibility to choose. Even in the worst cases, still you have a possibility to choose. Uh, my, my mom came from a religious family. My father came and loved very much my mom and tried to obey the, the religious in the house. And for me, I felt that I choose to be a believer. And, uh, and this is part of my life. And all the time to choose in the morning that I want to live, all the time to choose in the morning, what I want to do for my life. In the beginning, I was studying in special school. After that, I continued to regular school when I was about 11 years old. And it was a, a game change for, for, for my life because while you are in the, in the special school, you are in small class, you have all the attention around you. And suddenly, oh, I arrived to 40 students that I need to learn with them. And I re really remember you know, the children remember always a kind of scene in their life. And, and I remember the moment that I entered with my dad. He was very excited that I'm starting in, in the regular school. And then the doctor, uh, the doctor, the, and then the teacher asked him about, uh, about me over my head. And she asked him, do I have, do I know what I have? Now, to ask this question, my father, it's like, it's, it's something that it's not, uh, it's not logic because all the time he gave me all the information about my situation. And also you cannot see that in the Zoom, but I'm sitting on the wheelchair. It's something that I cannot ignore. It's not that somebody can hide it for me and I don't know what I have. I see that all the time with the relationship with the children in the, in the, in the garden, in the, in the, all the clubs that with the children, in the mall, in all the places. I know that I have something that is different. How can she ask if I know what I have? And, and my father that always was sarcastic bit. So he told, he answered her, I think she noticed. And, uh, and this is really what my father, he passed away three, three years ago. And he all the time balanced with the big humor, Jewish humor, but a uh, uh, large of humor. And also, it was very, very precise about the, my medical stuff. It was very organized. Uh, and all the time, you really believe that I need to, to take the responsibility about my life. It will protect me from everything, but to take all the responsibility about my life. Odelia, um, you're talking about choices. Um, from just learning a little bit about you, you also chose to be a singer, didn't you? Yes. Uh, I chose to to, to first to write a song and uh, to compose the music. Uh, I cannot play any instrument because of my disability, but I work with uh, Daniel Weissman and he listened to the music that I sang to him. And after that, Dana Belger, that she's a well-known singer in Israel. She, she was the editor of, of, uh, of that uh, album and we did clips. And also it's something also about 
for me to think it's not only to think to to think about kind of subject it's being in the front in the stage to show and to say I'm proud of what I am and who I am and to show the beauty that I can bring to the world and it's also kind of to be activist also by by art you also can be an activist by art by the fact that you put that in the center of the Of the discussion but the fact that you you're sharing your idea and sometimes when you listen to my music to my songs it's not like any other song any other person could sing that and uh, maybe there is another interpretation when 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 you know the story of the artist but it still talks to your heart the same that like a person without disability would sing that the same song Amazing. I'm sure it speaks to many people's desires and wishes to make their dream come true. You're an inspiration. That's amazing, Odelia. Um, let me ask you about your path in Israeli society. Did you get to serve in the Israel Defense Forces or were you a part of the Israeli National Civic Service? So unfortunately, I was not. Uh, when I was 17, I lost my big brother. My big brother uh, died in the army in his extra service, Meluim. Nathaniel of Blessed Memory. Nathaniel Freddy. It's just on Hanukkah. It's the day that he passed away in the fourth candle uh, of Hanukkah. May his memory uh, be a blessing. Amen. And uh, it was amazing. But uh, really, not because all the time you tell all the story. He was a champion of Israel in, in judo. And he was amazing, amazing uh, brother. And for me, it was sure that I'm going to serve my country. It's something very... It's something by nature because this is the family that I grew up. I, I can tell you another secret that I didn't speak about in this all. My grandfather was a, a, a member in the Congress uh, from Tunis, Congress of uh, Herzl, not the first one, of course. It was not the time, but the next Congress, he was a member because we are very, very Zionist. My, my grandfather was belong to the re- revisionist. A group and and we really see on this so it was so sure for me that there was of course we go to the army of course that we go to the national service but I was not accepted because they thought that it would be so much too much uh, money to, to spend if they would give me service to the army or give me service to the national service today I must say that the, the thing are a little bit different I As I, I, I'm 43, I look much younger, but I'm 43. And, uh, and, uh, and I know that today there are kind of a way to, to, uh, to, to get also in the army and to get also in the, in the national service. But on those days, it was very hard for me. It was like a broken heart for me. So what did you do? What did you do as a result? What did, the, did your sorrow, where did your sorrow lead you? So I said, I will find another place to volunteer. And I will give my best to the one that want to take it. And then I volunteer for many years in wonderful projects in Israel that called Beta Gergelim. And I volunteer for many years in wonderful other projects of a youngster of Ilan. And, and I think if I will calculate all the hours that I, I, I gave them, I think I'm like a... Top general or something like that by the hour that they gave to the country and they did it with the most of love and and I don't feel sorry about it. I know that I gave my service for that. I didn't stay in the back and say, "Oh, pity me, I cannot do, they don't accept me. What I will do with my life no I try to to build from it something good and Odelia, and here you are, um the first Israeli elected to this very respectable u n panel. Um, when did you first think about running for this, uh, for this position? How did it come about? I have one rule in my life. It means open doors. You always need to open doors. And when they talk with me about it, I didn't even know if, if it's something that uh, I really would like, I can manage. But I said, I will open door, I will hear. And as much as I get into it, I understood how much it's. totally connected to all the things that they did in the last years, which means to be the, the chairperson of the modern circuit organization in Israel, of the form of the implementation. It means to be the chairperson of the advisory committee in the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Justice in Israel. 
uh, if there is a commission there, so there is advisory uh, committee. And it's really like, uh, it, it like looks so natural to continue to this kind of level. It looks so big, but I said, I'm not afraid. I always said, I'm not afraid to try and try. And if I will fall down, and if I will not succeed, so I will get up later and I will continue and I will fight in another way. It, it never, so I never afraid to try. And, and for me, it was really like a long way because there was Corona in the middle. The election should took place on June and, and it happened at last in, the, in December, in the end of November, 30th of November. And, the, and, but still, I had the time also. There is always good in the bad time. So I had time also to meet a lot of, uh, of a person from all over the world. So, so, so one second, before we touch on those meetings that I'm very interested <laughs> in, I want to ask you, first of all, what are you hoping to achieve in this position for Israel and for the world? So first of all, uh, I, I will think about something that for me, it's the most important thing. Most of the people with disability in the world, also in Israel, a lot of them, are not aware to the rights, to the fact that there is convention, the language of convention, what the country ratify for, what they sign for, what they have to do. And for me, I want to reach not to the person that, you know, know about it and all the laws. No, this one, everybody knows. But to reach to the person that live in institution, in, in institute, and is there and nobody take care of him in the way that he should be. And for me, in my opinion, he shouldn't be there. I believe that every person should be a part of the community, no matter what, that the government needs to the, the assist around him, whatever he needs in his own place, the place that he chooses, what he wants to eat, where he wants to sleep, with whom he wants to live. And, and this is one thing that I really want to achieve, to get to those people. And another thing, it's about education, because for me, education is like the base of everything. My mom was a teacher of French, and uh, I, I receive it in the blood, probably. And, 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 and when you are a child with disability, you, always need, you also need to create your own identity. And I always said that as a child with disability, I had like certain identity. I had the identity of being a child and I had the identity of being a child with disability and how not to be ashamed of what you are and how to be proud of what you are and to see the, the value of what you are and what you can bring to the world. And in the amazing project that uh, I wish that any country that will hear about it will duplicate it and, and uh, implement it in, in their own country. It's a project that I'm, I'm, I'm doing in, in the Merhavim Institute. Uh, it's about including teachers with disability as a role model, as a teacher, because I really believe that teacher with disability can be a wonderful role model. Uh, you know, I wanna, I mean, just listening to you, a lot of people may think about uh, the big challenge of incorporating kids with disabilities in schools. And here you are spearheading the teachers and it makes me think about spreading Israel's light onto the world, not just as a startup nation with technology, but your talk, you're touching on the soul, on the neshama of Israel, which is truly exciting. You mentioned before that you interacted with many people. So I want to ask you, describe some of these interactions with diplomats, with professionals. What sense did you get from them about you and about Israel, knowing Israel's uphill battle in the, uh, public, uh, court, in the court of public opinion? So before we answer for that, I will just mention something. Because of what you said, think about Moses. Moses had the problem to speak. He was a person with disability. And still he was our biggest leader. Our biggest leader. And that's why I believe that anyone can do. And when, it, when you speak about the, the, the person that I met all over the world, so many times you found that the, the basic issue we all share. It's about education, it's about the rights of the women, it's about the rights of the children. And we have conversation. We have conversation with each other. We want always the same thing. We even did a wonderful webinar uh, during the campaign about tourists, about the, all the technology idea of tourists in Israel. 
and for countries that this is the basic of uh, like all the economy is based on that, it's really important to understood that there are untapped markets that they are not using. They are not uh, 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 make it uh, evaluate it and and uh, and uh, and then we spoke about many kind of technologies that they can use and maybe have some uh, cooperation with program in Israel and I really believe that Israel has a lot to share about the thinking outside of the box it's something looks so simple but for person with disability you need it all the time to think outside of the box and I don't think, Odelia, I, I haven't uh, seen the box that can contain you. So you are, you are the epitome of out of the box. I wanted to ask you, as, as far as your, um, your message, how would you change the current conversation on this topic? What would you ask of Israel and the world to change about their approach and perspective on people with disabilities? So for me, the first thing is to change the conversation From charity to conversation about rights. In Israel, it's wonderful. You know the Commission of Israel. It's under the Justice Ministry. It says a lot about the, the perspective that they look at it, the idea that there is behind. But still, there are a long way to work and to, to fix. And always, always, I think that we need to think about persons with disabilities In, an, in another perspective that it's enriched the world, that it can be a bridge for other community. And, and, and really, when you look at a child with disability, or when you look and when you see you, are a, you have a business and you want to accept a person, and you're hesitating if to receive a person with disability or a person without disability, so look inside to the eyes of the person and look about what he reached in his goal and don't look about his own disability, because it's something that he adds to his value. It's not something that makes his value less. So, so I really believe that the time that person will look at, at another person with disability on this kind of glasses, uh, they will win. They, they're winning another person, they're winning another soul, they're winning another perspective for life, they're winning another way to think about things, another to ma- way to manage with other people. They're all the time in the win side and not in the loss side. So lastly, um, let me ask you the clear question of what is your message to our viewers today? What do you want to leave them with as, as a lesson from you That we had an opportunity to get to know in the last half an hour so for me, I always believe no matter what person with or without disability is to see the potential that you have in the person's eyes, to see the potential in what it can do, to think always positive about the person, to think what uh, where it can reach, what God it can reach uh, and sometimes the goals are very simple to to have a conversation. To have something meaningful in his life, to be a part of his family, this is a message for me. For me. You know, Odelia, I want to leave our um, viewers with a statement you made after your election. You said, "I feel privileged to be a member of the CRPD, the place where Israel was a partner in creating a new language for people with disabilities, a language of rights, language of pride in who you are. In our uniqueness, you said, as people with disabilities who enrich society with all the good that we have built. And I think this is a very important message, just like uh, you just mentioned, for everyone to hear. I would like to thank you for sharing your words of inspiration with us. It's truly wonderful to see Israel's light shining so far in the distance on the global stage with you at its beacon. Thank you very much. Happy Hanukkah. Israel and the UN can work for good, not just in the negative term. If you think about last week, on November 29th, we commemorated the partition plan and the world's recognition of the re-emergence of the Jews in their Jewish homeland. 
but we're also accustomed to having November 29th as the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, where so much negativity is poured into the conversation. And here we are, one day later on November 30th, and we were fortunate enough to have Odelia Fitusi on the UN floor, sharing Israel's light in standing up for people with disabilities. This is a message of hope. It is a message of never giving up, of keep doing better in spite of all of the odds and difficulties, and knowing that even these international fora, UN and others, can be used for good in spite of all of the difficulties that we face as Israel and the Jewish people on these platforms. I'd like to thank you all for watching. And to all, I say, stay safe and stay healthy. I'd like to thank our director, Sloan Copeland, JBS's managing director, Dara Golub, our technical manager, Michael Paley, transmission manager, John McDevitt, and to our wonderful producer of In The News, Carol Lilienthal. For JBS, I'm Shahar Azani. Until next time, see you soon. Chag Sameach and Lehi Tov.